The only thing that, that, that most people don't understand is, is that you can practice and practice and practice and practice in home and do all of the moves, but you really cannot practice the effect until you do it in front of an audience. I started doing magic when I was eight years old. I'll be 68 in December, so it means I've been working at this for about 60 years. When I was very young, my parents took me to the Hannah Theater to see Harry Blackstone Sr., that's the old man, and uh, he literally d did a dancing handkerchief, and he asked someone in the audience to lend him a handkerchief, and my father instantly handed me one, and I ran it up on stage, and he used the handkerchief, and it danced all over the stage and in and out of a cabinet, which was referred to as the Cassandega cabinet now, it, it, within the industry, wouldn't mean anything to you, but it does to me now. Uh, and at the end, he unt untied it and, and handed it back to me, and he whispered to me that if I would bring it backstage after the show, he would autograph it for me. So we went backstage, and he did a kind of a caricature uh, of himself was his autograph. And, uh, and uh, then my parents, for my eighth birthday, uh, bought me a magic set, and I've been doing it ever since. In 1975, we came in off the road. We opened a magic shop called Pandora's Box, which we had for 10 years. And uh, in 1985, decided to close that and go back and perform full-time again. Uh, my wife didn't want to go back out on the road anymore, so I decided to do a comedy act. And then I did that on a table saw, and I couldn't do some of the real skillful stuff. And so I started doing children's magic as a character called Tricky the Clown. And I don't do anything halfway, so I went to... The University of Wisconsin at La Crosse uh, for clown camp and was there and while I was there two of my instructors were Lou Jacobs and Mark Anthony both of which are Ringling Master Clowns and then uh, I went to uh, Wells College in, in New York, uh, Aurora, New York and uh, for also clown school there and one of my instructors there was Frosty Little another of the Ringling Master Clowns and I did that for several years and then developed an allergy to the makeup and had to stop doing that, so I created a character called Mr. Tricky uh, because I didn't want to lose the name recognition. And uh, I still do Mr. Tricky, but I've just created a new character called Stumbledore the Wizard. That one I've kind of created on my own. I, I knew what I wanted to do. He needed to be silly, so Stumbledore was a good name for him, and uh, it's a silly character. I have a great time with it. It's good, and I'm still back doing the adult stuff again, too. So the show is called Laughs by Leffler, and that was created by my then agent, which was Quantrell Enterprises, and uh, Bob helped me put that together many, many years ago. We started this agency in 1985, and we now represent over 350 different performers, uh, as well as all kinds of rentals for inflatables and rides and so on and so forth. We've got magicians, clowns, mimes, jugglers, ventriloquists, puppeteers, bands, DJs, karaoke, animal acts, pony rides, face painters, balloon artists, caricature artists, hypnotists, stilt walkers. We do murder mysteries, casino nights, night at the races. Can you tell I've done that before? <laughs> <laughs> oh my, what is the greatest reward of my career? Uh, I think just making people laugh and have a good time. I love doing that. That's, you know, my wife keeps asking me when I'm going to retire, and the answer is when it stops being fun. Actually, the truth of the matter is, if you, if you know what you're doing, you pretty much get a chance, you, you learn about how much abuse they will take. And it sounds self-serving, but usually when they break, it's because the balloon has a flaw in it, more often than my fault. You know, I have so much fun with these kids that ask me at parties, they say, can I have a balloon? I'll blow it up. And I go, you can't blow it up. Yes, I can. I said, even your dad can't blow it up. And they go, yes, he can. And then we turn around and pass out balloons, and nobody can get even a bubble in one of them. And then they look at me, and I'm, you know, two or three or four times older than they are. And uh, it took me several years to physically learn how to blow them up by mouth. It's not an easy proposition. Probably isn't a lot of need to tell you what that is, is there? Okay. That's why I never tell in the front what it's gonna be. <laughs> <laughs>